We've all seen them, massive ships navigating through the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway, transporting cargo to various ports such as Thunder Bay, Buffalo, and Montreal. They're huge, majestic, and mysterious. What happens on these ships? What goes on behind the scenes? What is the crew like? In short, what is it like to live and work on one of these freighters? Kyle, you want to give a scary call, please? Uh, my name is Wilson Walters. I'm captain of the ship, the CSL Wellen, and I've been with CSL for 25 years. I grew up in a little town in uh, Newfoundland, Canada. When you grow up in this town, you either fish or you go away to look for work, and fishing was starting to die, so a lot of the people from my town had come to uh, the Great Lakes and found work and they enjoyed what they were doing, so I thought I would come up and uh, see what it was all about. I think on day one I was sold. I, uh, I got on a ship and went, you know what, I think this is for me. The CSL Welland is a Seaway Max vessel, meaning that it's 740 feet long and 78 feet wide. It's as big as a ship can be and still fit through the locks at the St. Lawrence Seaway. Working on this enormous laker breeds a unique routine and lifestyle all its own. Much of the 15-member crew found themselves drawn away from a typically 9-to-5 job for a career on the water for good pay and something different, although weeks, if not months, away from home can be challenging. We spoke with several crewmen, most who have come from northern Canada, but a few who have traveled as far as the Philippines and a couple of cadets in training to learn about their life on their home away from home. Uh, deck cadets, so we're uh, kind of like apprentice officers. So we try to learn as much as we can every day about basically every operation that happens on the ship. So when we're on deck, we learn as much about uh, general seamanship practices, like using the winches, you know, setting up gangways, accommodation ladders, um, like launching lifeboats, knowing how to use survival crafts. Uh, when we're on the bridge, we learn as much as we can about navigation and using the navigation equipment to its fullest potential. And uh, yeah, we just we try to learn as much as we can every day. And uh, yeah, there's no limit to how much you can learn on a ship, that's for sure. I usually work about eight to 10 hours a day. Um, and then because I'm a cadet, I have to do some, uh, some homework for my school. So that probably takes up one or two hours of my day. Um, and then I'll probably try to fit in a workout for about an hour a day and then I'll have two or three hours left kind of either to for myself either as free time or to watch a movie or or just to relax. I started off as a cadet and went to third mate and then second mate for a while and then chief mate for 10 years. Now I'm get the training in and I'm hoping to be captain now later on this fall. You go into different ports and no two ports are exactly the same. You might go back to the same port, but it might not be the same conditions. So every time you load a boat or unload a boat, it's a, basically it's a new experience. Uh, we got access to lots of things. There's a gym, a uh, place you play darts, watch TV, internet. The rooms are nice. Uh, we do have Wi-Fi. I work from eight to five in the engine room. Uh, I get up in the morning, I have breakfast, go down the engine room and one of the watch engineers will tell me what I'm going to do during the day. I wake up in the morning and just to know that I'm going to be doing something that I like to do every day. I can remember my first day, uh, it was pretty much what have I got myself into. It was a big difference from what I did before. Uh, I mean obviously seeing this massive ship. I start work at 4, 4 a.m. and I finish at 8 a.m. And then I start again at uh, 4 p.m. But on the ship we say it's 1600 and finish at 8 p.m. We do security rounds. We sound tanks, make sure there's no water. We clean. We, we maintain ropes. We make sure like everything is secured. We assist in with the, the dock guys for unloading if they need anything or if they need any hatches open, we open up the hatches, close the hatches. In my downtime, I talk with family, uh, any chance that I could get. My wife, my two kids, my mom, my dad. Uh, I'm the third mate, so I'm the safety officer representative. So I'm in charge of the uh, watching, uh, watch keeping 
for about eight hours a day, normally about the 812 watch. And normally in my off watch, I'll be doing checks around the boat, like safety-wise, like checking the uh, fire extinguishers, fire hoses, like anything safety oriented I gotta check and make sure it's okay and working. I have an alarm that goes off about seven o'clock, and then I normally take about 20 minutes to like get ready and then go head down for about 7.30 to uh, have breakfast. Then I head up to the uh, wheelhouse if we're out on the lake and uh, keep an eye out and just make sure we don't run into anything make, and keep the boat safe as best I can and just get us to our destination safely really so. Uh, generally as a mate, as you're coming in, you're spotting distances for the uh, captain up top. Since uh, we're about 700 plus feet away and he can't see 700 feet away, so you're basically his eyes. So you're spotting from the shoulder, which is about right where we're standing, and you're trying to give him distances he is off the wall, and how close he's getting in, and then as you're going into the lock, you tell him when the bow is approximately at the center line, so then he gets a rough idea how quickly he's coming in, how slowly he's coming in, so he doesn't come in too quick or come in too slow. Like. If you do a job that you love, you don't feel like you're working. I've got 40 years working on ships, and I can't find five days of my life that I said I don't like what I do or don't love what I do. I love my job. I enjoy being out here. I enjoy the time off. I love working with the people that I have on my ship. So for me, it's work, but it's a great job. The sacrifices, by all means, this wasn't easy. This wasn't an easy road for my family. They sacrificed a lot to see me gone a lot and then come home, go to school. My kids, my wife sacrificed immensely, but I always convinced them it was a means to a end. And that's when I became captain, they seen the means to the ends. They seen that, you know what, it paid off. Now I have lots of time off. Uh, we travel, we do a lot of stuff together. We're a great family. Next time you see a freighter on the Great Lakes or the St. Lawrence Seaway, look beyond its mighty hull carving through the waves. Think of people like Captain Walters and his crew who use their navigational and technical expertise to help carry this multi-billion dollar international industry on their shoulders. But also remember that they may not be too different from you. For more from Great Lakes Now, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media.